Are you prepared to see some epic cringe? Do you have what it takes to get through this entire video? Are you scared? Because I am. Today's video is a big one. One that you will not want to miss. So grab your puke bag and let's get started. What's up everybody, Hunter Avalone here and welcome to another episode of Gay Review! You may remember last month, I did a video explaining how queer kids stuff, along with other LGBT content creators, are collectively suing YouTube, alleging discrimination. If you haven't already seen that video, you definitely should check it out. But the basic summary is, queer kids stuff, as well as several other LGBT content creators, are suing YouTube, claiming discrimination towards them for their sexuality when it comes to monetization, videos getting restricted, and so forth. In my first video, I pretty easily debunked the ridiculous claims of discrimination, showing that most of the LGBT content was getting demonetized or restricted due to overtly sexual content, not LGBT content, which was right in line with YouTube's policy. So that was all we knew until now. Because ladies and gentlemen, I was lucky enough to get my hands on a copy of the lawsuit. That's right, today we will be taking an in-depth look at Lindsay's lawsuit and some of the insane claims in it. I know you have all been eagerly awaiting my follow-up to that lawsuit video, so here it is, you thirsty hoes. I'm gonna need these. The suit begins with a basic introduction to Lindsay and Queer Kid stuff, explaining that Lindsay Ammer makes LGBT content for children between the ages of 3 and 17. We also learn that Mix Ammer has an undergraduate degree in gender studies and theater and a graduate degree in performance studies. Well hey, with a degree like that, if YouTube doesn't work out, I'll have an extra side of pickles. Thanks. We learned that on May 10th, 2016, Lindsay uploaded the first Queer Kid Stuff video. It was shared and received only 2,000 views without negative comments. Huffington Post also published a favorable article discussing the video. So Lindsay's beginning on YouTube started out pretty good. I mean, yeah, she didn't blow up or anything, but she did receive mainstream media attention along with positive comments. However, that didn't last long. On June 23rd, 2016, The Daily Stormer published a really disgusting article about queer kid stuff, spewing blatant anti-Semitic and homophobic rhetoric. Now you may not like Lindsay. As you all know, I'm not too fond of them either. But I think we can all agree there is a productive way to approach criticism, and degrading Lindsay with anti-Semitic remarks is pathetic and immature. It's also very important to note that The Daily Stormer is actually, and I I don't use this term loosely, a white supremacist website. The Daily Stormer commentary generated an avalanche of hate speech directed at Mix Ammer and the Queer Kid Stuff channel. The hate speech involved vicious and obscene anti-Semitic, misogynist, and homophobic content, as well as other obscene material, and cumulated in a death threat against Miss Ammer. Okay, so we've learned Lindsay's sad story, but by now you're probably wondering what this has to do with a lawsuit against YouTube? Yeah, well, here's when it gets really dumb. Defendants, meaning YouTube, permitted all of that hate speech to appear directly in the comments section of Mix Ammer's Queer Kid Stuff channel. And although defendant Google finally removed the Daily Stormer from their platform in the fall of 2017, the hate speech directed at Mix Ammer continued unabated on the channel. So Lindsay is blaming YouTube for permitting hate speech in her comment section. What exactly should YouTube have done? Obviously getting dogpiled is no fun, but how do you blame YouTube to the point of a lawsuit over this? You even admit that Google did remove the Daily Stormer from their platform, which is true. So how exactly do you come to the conclusion that this is YouTube's fault? It sounds to me like you're blaming YouTube for the fact that the majority of people just don't like your content. I'm sorry, Lindsay, but you can't have it both ways. Either YouTube is a platform that allows and promotes questionable content such as yours along with videos critical of you, or it's a platform that is careful with how they promote content such as yours, as well as protecting you from the hate with which you have issue. Next, we learned that Lindsay supports the right of all to express their viewpoint in a civil manner, but Lindsay does take issue with YouTube's systematic efforts to restrain or financially harm Mix Ammer's content and their ability to 
defend and protect themselves on a platform that promises to treat everyone equally. That is not the case here because YouTube selectively applies their content-based regulations and filtering to promote and profit from homophobic hate mongers who are allowed to inundate Mix Ammer and other LGBTQ plus channels when their content directly and objectively violates YouTube's content-based rules that they claim exist only to keep the platform safe for all of the YouTube community. This right here, my friends, is when it gets really, really bad. This lawsuit is heavily suggesting that YouTube should remove content that Lindsay deems hateful. Again, the Daily Stormer is disgusting, and what they said about Lindsay was completely wrong. But to conflate all criticism as homophobic hate mongers is ridiculous. Not everyone criticizing you or even making fun of you is a white supremacist neo-Nazi. I'm sorry, Lindsay, but this isn't YouTube selectively applying their rules to profit from hate. This is YouTube recognizing that not all the videos criticizing you are hateful, and everyone has a right to express their disapproval approval, even if it hurts your feelings. The fact that you claim to support everyone expressing their viewpoint, while also blaming YouTube for mean comments and trying to pressure YouTube to remove videos mocking you, is a pathetic way of showing your entitlement and double standards. The lawsuit also details that Lindsay was unable to remove hate speech using YouTube's filter tool. Again, how is this grounds for a lawsuit? You can't sue YouTube because you don't know how to work their website, or because YouTube has a tool that works just as well or just as badly for all content creators. Yes, YouTube is a platform with many flaws, but neither you nor anyone else can filter all the hate from your comments section. Just because more people hate your content and express it doesn't mean that YouTube is somehow being unfair to you. Despite repeated complaints to YouTube about the hate speech comments, and after devoting considerable efforts to reconfigure the defendant's filters to screen them, a number of members of Queer Kid Stuff's intended audience, including parents, wrote to Mix Ammer complaining about the obscene, hateful comments posted on the Queer Kid Stuff channel and informing Mix Ammer. Because YouTube failed to regulate or filter the hate speech directed to the Queer Kid Stuff channel between 2016 and 2018, Mix Ammer was forced to disable the comments section to the channel in the fall of 2018 and to forgo the ability to fully engage with and reach Queer Kid Stuff's intended audience with its content. This honestly sounds like Lindsay doesn't know how to use YouTube. So she's just suing. First of all, why on earth would you reach out to YouTube about your own comment section? You know that you can delete comments on your own videos, right? Secondly, YouTube did not fail to filter the hate speech. You failed to properly set up the filter tool. I get that the dogpiling hurt your channel. That sucks, but this isn't YouTube's fault, and it's certainly not grounds for a lawsuit. That'd literally be like if I sued Twitter because people were tweeting mean things about me. It makes no sense. It seems far more appropriate to sue the Daily Stormer for launching the initial hate mob rather than suing YouTube for failing to protect you? I don't know, but you can't sue YouTube for not being a safe space. The lawsuit then details how after the comments were disabled, people began making response videos. I'm sure this portion of the suit is referring to me, however, none of my critiques or criticisms of Queer Kid stuff is hate speech. Next, Lindsay he reached out to YouTube to complain about the fact that reaction videos to Queer Kids stuff were appearing in search results. Duh. Mix Ammer repeatedly complained to Google slash YouTube about the hate speech reaction videos, which appear in the recommended up next material and in the search results for Queer Kid stuff. But YouTube refused to subject that content to their community guidelines and other speech regulations, or to prevent reaction video creators from posting links to the Queer Kid stuff channel on the reaction videos. In simpler terms, YouTube didn't delete content that I deemed hateful, therefore YouTube is not applying their community guidelines fairly. YouTube is getting faster and faster at removing content it deems hateful. If you reported these videos and they weren't removed, odds are they were not hate speech, but instead criticism that you found offensive. Also, again, this shows that Lindsay really doesn't understand YouTube. YouTube cannot prevent creators from posting a link in their description. 
This is so ridiculous and such a shallow, weak reason to sue the company. It sounds a lot more like you got on the platform and shared some controversial opinions and then blamed YouTube when you received backlash. YouTube should be ashamed of themselves for promising LGBTQ plus consumers that the same rules apply equally to everyone and then singling out the LGBTQ plus plaintiffs like Mix Ammer and the greater LGBTQ plus community for content and monetization violations while promoting and profiting from homophobic hate speech that threatens violence and goes unregulated on the YouTube platform. Well, that's a pretty emotionally loaded conclusion. Also, I'd be really curious to know which videos are threatening violence that YouTube has allowed to stay on their platform. Even if those videos did exist, it would make far more sense to simply report the content instead of suing YouTube. To claim hate speech goes unregulated on YouTube is asinine as well. I've had multiple videos removed for apparent hate speech, and last I heard, YouTube is getting better and faster at removing content it deems hateful. You claim they don't apply the rules equally or that they're singling queer kids stuff out, when in reality, queer kids stuff just receives a large amount of negative feedback online. This isn't YouTube's fault, Lindsay. Lastly, YouTube boasts about removing the spread of what they call borderline content, and controversial videos are rare monetized. So honestly, I fail to see how YouTube is promoting or profiting off of these alleged hateful videos that you keep mentioning. Well, there you have it, folks. The pathetic lawsuit trying to guilt YouTube into removing videos Lindsay doesn't like. This is honestly shocking and shows that Lindsay will go to great lengths to try and remove content that she deems offensive or hateful. Please give this video a like, comment below, and subscribe to the channel for 420 years of good luck. Thanks everyone for watching. Peace.